I really liked um, Backstreet Boys when I was like five. And I got my mum to draw a little goatee beard so I could be like the guy at the Backstreet Boys. And then I kind of moved on from that. And uh, the first two bands that sort of started me off wanting to be in a band and stuff was uh, the Libertines and the Coral. Um, but yeah, Backstreet Boys is probably regrettably in that earliest musical memory. Why would I leave a mark when everything's been done? It's basically about a uh, following a path that, like where we come from, um, it's what we're doing isn't normal at all, you know. And it's basically just the sort of traps that come with living a life that isn't normal, basically. And, um, just having like an unbalanced life, I suppose. Because like we go on tour for two or three weeks and live a really like overly fruitful life, and then you know come home and it, it, it's 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 such a change, you know, to then go home and then try and sort of survive and keep playing in a band and writing songs and then going off on tour again and yeah so it's just about like having an unbalanced life. Time to judge has we were in Liverpool recording each other night time and we I knew that we needed to shoot a video in like two weeks and I was starting to shit myself a wee bit because I had another music video to do for another artist as well. And they, I just came up with this idea where I would be walking backwards. Just film me walking backwards and then reverse it. And there's some kind of there's some kind of link with what a song is about in it that like go in a completely different way to everyone else and and looking really kind of sedated and fucked up. You know what I mean? Um, so it just it just kind of fed the idea of a song really. I think. Yeah. And I mean, the way the frame kind of closes in as well kind of alludes uh, to various things as well. Yeah. It all works well, that well, was just an idea at the end because the lyric, obviously, in the chorus close in and I just want it to seem like I'm getting more and more trapped, you know. Because the song is basically, I read it kind of about, about me, you know what I mean? Um, so I wanted to give off the idea that everyone's sort of closing in. I have no idea right now. Um, we're just kind of doing it single by single, like EP by EP right now. But I don't think we'll, we'll have, I don't think we're a very sort of concept album band. We just write songs about what we know, you know. So there could be a few more in the same vein, but we have to wait and see really. I had just had the idea one day to do it because uh, you always have to make these little tour video things to try and get people pumped up for your tour. And they're always, the ones that we've done and the ones that we see other bands doing, they're all the same, you know. It's just loads of fast little clips of band playing and to make them just look super cool. But then I just thought, they, d they don't like stand out at all. So I think after a Stranger Things video as well, when we showed that we actually have a kind of funny side too. Um, I just thought it would be a good thing to do. And I've thought of little clips and films that would work and spent like, I just love doing it, you know. Um, so it's more like just to have fun than anything, but it worked and it spread. You worried quite a little bit too, which is good. I've not really done much to be honest. We, had, we set off with good intentions, but not really. A few of the boys went on that march in London, um, but I was too rough, so I just stayed. I, had, I needed, it was on our day off as well, or one day off um, during the tour, so I needed to just sort of detox for a day. So I just stayed in my travel room all day, and I felt so much better for it, because uh, it was sort of mid-tour as well, so. I needed that. Yeah, just kind of work. But other, yeah, other than that, I've done no exploring, and the rest of the boys have 
basically done none as well, but it's still been a lot of fun. Just in the house, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've never, like, a lot of people say, like, oh, John O'Groats is so beautiful and stuff like that, and they, or just the Highlands in general, and, like, you must, like, sit writing a song by a tree and looking at it. No, I just, I just sit with a guitar in my bedroom and write a song, and I'm pretty sure the rest of the band do the same, you know? I guess it was, cause I was kind of just wondering, you know, being so far away from everything in this kind of, like, sense of like isolation does that kind of work its way into the music at all do you think or? i think it must do in some kind of way but like subconsciously um i mean stuff that we write about isolation kind of comes crops up in songs as well so it definitely it finds its way in it but um it's not something that we like try to make it sound like that or try to write a song about it it just sort of crops up which I, th I think is the right way to do it because if you try and if you're trying to force feed someone that were from John O'Groats and all that, and it just gets a bit, I don't know, a bit twee or something. It's a bit religion basically, and it's it's not like siding on on one side. It maybe has a little bit, but. Um, just about how, how people can be almost brainwashed into something. But then there's good that comes from it as well, you know. Uh, musically, it was Darren, our drummer, who like wrote the chords and stuff and sort of came up with a tune. Um, and it was our, our keys player actually wrote the words, I think. Uh, but it started to sound a bit like Benny and the Jets by Elton John, and I think we liked that about it. Uh, yeah, but it came out kind of sounding like us, which was good, rather than Elton John. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm also can see why. I mean, I listen to Spotify probably more than I listen to vinyl, just because if you're on the road or whatever, you stick Spotify on. So, like, I'm not just someone who would just listen to vinyl. It's magic to have a vinyl and stuff. Again, like I don't, I don't think anyone in the band has enough money to just keep spending 15, 20 quid on a vinyl, you know? Um, but I do, there's no better feeling than actually putting a vinyl on when listening to music. But uh, I'm glad that Spotify and all that streaming sites are about because it gives you more, discover more bands and stuff that way, you know? And buying a vinyl as well is just a good way of sort of showing support for a new band that you really like as well. So, um, yeah, I love vinyl, but I c s totally see the other side of it as well. Yeah. And so what was the kind of experience then like when you put on your vinyl for the first time, you know, getting the album out on vinyl? I must have that was pretty mad, yeah. Um, it had been lingering for so long as well. Because the album was like about two and a half years in the making. And like a lot of like ups and downs and arguments with record labels and stuff, and then to finally get it back with like a beautiful sleeve and put it on, it was pretty insane, really. I've never really thought about it, really, because I mean, obviously, <coughs> there's certain songs that, say, your management or label would go, that's a single. That should be. It shouldn't be any longer than a certain length. But I think naturally, we just write songs at that length because we're sort of into like classic songs. You know, I don't know. It's a good question, but I think it's just naturally how we do it. You know, like we 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 don't think. I really like bands who have big long interludes and stuff like that. Um, but we're just not very, we're not very self-indulgent in that we won't play the same chord progression for four minutes just because it sounds cool. We think about how good is the song and that chord progression might only need to be for 20 seconds kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I think it's just 
whatever works best for the song and without being self-indulgent and we could really wag out at this bit kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are you ever, like, is that something you're kind of quite conscious of or worried about ever becoming self-indulgent? You quite nah, kind of it's just something that, that's sort of been ingrained in us from day one of having a band, really, I think. I think we've all been singing from the same hymn, hymn sheet, you know. Um, so no, it's not something we worry about, but we just, we, that's the way we've, we've done it so far. Oh yeah, yeah, and like playing the um, <coughs> more the more tours that we do, like headline tours, you realise how much people love the songs of that album, you know. And they, with new music coming out, more and more people are getting into the band now, and I think they're sort of discovering our first album for it for the first time, you know. And they're thinking, fuck, like this is actually really good, you know. Like how did they miss it, kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a sort of album campaign and all that's over, but it's still doing a really good job for us, really, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, like new people discovering your band, you've got this, like, you've already got, tw unlike a lot of their bands, you've already got that 12 songs. Yeah, there, exactly, really yeah. Yeah. Discovering it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much. No bother, man. Oh. Pleasure.